Hello guys and welcome back to Mental Health Mondays. I hope you are all well. I'm trying out a new little thing with this headband here so let me know what you think about it in the comments below. For today's video I'm going to be talking about BPD and basically answering the question does BPD make you a bad person? Spoiler alert, the answer is no by the way. Um, but basically I wanted to make this video because I get hate comments on a lot of the mental health videos I do and the thing is a lot of the comments are specifically aimed towards people with BPD. The format is generally that the person has had a bad experience, it's usually a guy, with a female in their life who has had BPD and they are basically saying why I'm a bad person and why everyone should stay away from those with BPD. You know, I have had people saying that I should just go and die, that I'm the devil, that I'm a horrible person. So I just wanted to do a video on this because I know it's something that people with BPD can struggle with, is feeling like like a bad person because there are a lot of unpleasant symptoms that go along with it. So yeah, there's a lot of stigma around BPD and <laughs> let me tell you, most of it is negative. If you Google BPD, you're gonna go down a deep dark hole of people online saying that people with BPD are horrible, manipulative, people. So basically if you are diagnosed with BPD, refrain from googling it and hopefully your google has brought you to my videos where we talk about BPD in a positive light. Uh, but I just think there's a lot of ignorance surrounding BPD and the thing is online people are so quick to criticise those with BPD and quick to write them off. Like so many people say oh they're a lost cause, they're never going to recover from BPD, they should all be locked up etc etc. But then there's not as much information on solutions to BPD and how people can get help and get better. So people are just out here bashing those with BPD without offering any solutions or any compassion for their situation. Um, the thing is, there is always a reason why someone has borderline personality disorder. There's always a reason why they're behaving the way that they are. For me, I have spent a lot of my life feeling very, very empty and not worthy as a person. I do not have a high opinion of myself. I put myself down a lot and it's probably like my main issue. I just have a real tough time loving myself. Over the years I have come to realise that I am in fact not a bad person because I have BPD. I do think that I'm quite a good person. So the thing is a lot of our hate is actually directed towards ourselves and not towards other people. Other people I think just tend to get caught in the crossfire of how we're feeling and generally most people with BPD self-harm, they've attempted suicide, they really really don't like themselves. Like I genuinely believed that if I killed myself the world would not care and the world would be better off without me. And my mum would always be saying like no honestly like it would shatter our lives and I'd be like no honestly like you'll be fine without me. Yes my actions caused a lot of pain to my family but did I mean for them to and did I set out intentionally to hurt my family? No. And I think that is the difference. People with BPD unintentionally hurt the ones that are close to us and a lot of us do this, it's not just people with BPD. The bottom line is I felt like I was a bad person and that I almost deserved to be punished. I was so like focused inwards on myself, I was in so much pain and I know that mental illness, well I'm of the opinion that mental illness cannot be an excuse for your behaviour. You can't treat someone like shit and constantly get away with it. People with mental illness do not get a free pass to go around and do that and that is a bitter pill to swallow when you have mental illness and you feel and you don't actually realise that you're hurting people because you don't think that you're doing anything wrong. However, what mental illness and specifically BPD can do is explain why someone is behaving in that way. And that is usually down to the person to kind of look deeper and realise, okay, this is why I'm behaving like this. However, there was, I would say, 17 years of my life that I was going around behaving the way that I was and I didn't realise that these behaviours were really really toxic. That is just how my brain had wired itself from previous traumas and situations in my childhood. It then, my brain had just learnt to work in that way, my brain was unwell and that also doesn't make me a bad person because I didn't realise that I was doing them. I was just going about and living my life 
the only way I knew how. Like I literally, when I was younger, I had no information on mental health or even like BPD. Like I didn't get diagnosed with BPD until I was 21. And then as soon as I realized I did have an issue, I mean, first of all, I was told that I had anxiety and depression. And so after getting out the whole, I wanna kill myself and you know, I actually realized, okay, like maybe it's time to work on myself. I put my all into therapy and trying to better myself because you know it's not nice to feel depressed so obviously I wanted to feel better. I learned through CBT and DBT that clearly the way that my brain was wired and the way I was behaving when I was younger clearly wasn't helping me go on the right path so I knew that I had to do something about it and I know that people with BPD can be difficult to be around like I completely understand that and I'm not excusing anyone with BPD's behavior I know our moods can be all over the place and I know that when I was really ill I would be very manipulative but the main thing is that now I am aware of those traits and let me tell you I have worked hard in therapy not to get rid of them because this is the thing about BBD it never goes away it's kind of like something that is just gonna always lie dormant in me and I just got to keep it under control but looking back at when I was 17 and in the depths of it I would say I have pretty much minimized if not even got rid of a lot of the symptoms of BPD so it is possible so through therapy and therapy is a must if you want and recover from BPD. I have literally gone back to my childhood, gone back to the origin of where a lot of these behaviours have originated and formed in my brain and I have worked really hard on undoing however many years that my brain was working like that. People with BPD are so scared of abandonment and I've realised what the root cause of that is in my childhood and what I can do to help myself in future and the thing is like I said in therapy I realised that these techniques that I was using for you know fear of abandonment say like I was lashing out at a person and I was being manipulative and I was making Making them feel sorry for me because I didn't want them to leave me I've realized that that is a toxic and unhelpful behavior so I no longer well I try not to because obviously it's hard isn't it I try and no longer use techniques like that in actual fact I would argue that BPD almost makes you a better person and I'm not saying that everyone with BPD is better than everyone that's not that any mental health struggle that you go through and come out the other side and better yourself is gonna make you a better person. If I hadn't have gone through a tough time and had therapy for it and realized that, oh, it's this thing called BPD and delved into my behaviors, etc., like I wouldn't be the person that I am today. And I would say going through BPD has made me more empathetic with others. It's made me more aware of myself. It's made me more aware of the world around me. So no, BPD does not make you a bad person. And I think that noticing your behavior is a first step. And I know that there are so many people with BPD out there going untreated and not realizing what they're going through. But hopefully now as like awareness of this illness gets bigger and bigger, and hopefully we're going in a more positive direction of it, people will be able to think and maybe even watch this video and think, oh, okay, like I resonate with these behaviors. Like it's time to work on those. I think for me, one of the main techniques that I've found help my BPD and I have done a few videos on like how I've recovered from BPD but me and my psychiatrist did a lot of work on preventing myself from getting into that red zone because I feel like when you're in like the red zone your emotions etc are very very hard to control so with BPD recovery it's all about taking measures to make sure you don't escalate up there and it is all about noticing the difference in your behaviors and sensations etc and doing things like distracting yourself and using all your like coping techniques to avoid getting in that red area because it's so much easier to help yourself when you're a bit more calm. I think also another really useful one is detaching myself from the feeling and looking at it and thinking okay like this is how I feel what can I do to help it instead of letting myself get absolutely like engulfed by the emotion which is what we tend to do and people with BPD's emotions are all over the place luckily like I feel like my my roller coaster has evened out just a little bit but just acknowledge it and just sit with it so yeah I hope you have found 
this topic of discussion useful do let me know if you want me to go into more detail on the coping techniques that help me recover from bpd it is possible to live a fulfilling life with bpd let me tell you that i am living proof youtube please can you get better at blocking these comments because for some reason they get through the spam filter and then i have comments on my videos like oh i love this video that get flagged as spam Anyway, please do give this video a thumbs up if you did like it. Leave a comment below and let me know if any of this resonated with you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. I will see you all on Thursday for a new video and until then, goodbye!